I know, I'm going to record. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm well, just, anyway, I wasn't really going to talk about that, but for anyone who's interested, that's... I, I'm totally kidding. This is great. Um, <laughs> and I, uh, I wanted to say we are recording now, uh, but I'll just say Tannis is a, a librarian uh, in, in process, uh, mm -hmm. or like a, a, it seems like a librarian to be because has such great suggestions for books. Also the um, Vanished by James Ponty and um, most books by Gordon Corman, um, Ungifted and What's His Face. So, um, so let's begin. So hello museum families and welcome to RBCM at Home Kids, a play date through screens across British Columbia and the world and books and today will also be books too. So the previous sessions are recorded and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page. My name is Chris O'Connor and I'm a program, uh, learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. The museum and my home is on the unceded territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. I'm an uninvited guest on this territory and grateful to live, learn and raise a family on this land. So I'm a visual learner. I need to see things in order to understand it, which is why I love looking at pictures and books. If I'm reading something, I can imagine what's going on, but I also love to dive into the images on the page, place myself within the world, that world. Today, we'll be meeting an artist who makes those worlds within books, and we'll find out both how she does it, um, but also make some pictures with her. Also for this week, like last week, we're working with the Greater Victoria Public Library and their summer, uh, BC Summer Reading Club. So speaking of last week, uh, let's go back to last week's session where we were, um, and I'm just gonna share my screen, where we were, um, whoop. we met with Mark Laren Young, who's an author um, and has been writing lots of books recently about orchids and the fascinating world of orcas. And Mark sort of opened up our eyes and brought us into the world of orcas. And one of our uh, viewers, we, we didn't do a making thing last week. It was the first time we didn't. But one of our, view, one of our participants, one of our families, um, while listening to the stories, made this little, this orca out of plasticine or clay. So I wanted to share that. So today we will be making artwork. And we'd love to see what you made. Um, no pressure, but we'd love to see what you made. So you can share that with me, um, C-O-C-O-N-N-O-R at royalbcmuseum.bc.ca. And I'll share that on the chat and in the comments of Facebook uh, Live later. Um, or share it through our social media channel at Royal BC Museum or hashtag RBCMKids. After the session, keep exploring. We have a, a really wonderful learning portal that's a great way to sort of dive into the, the ideas of the museum, both visual and, and um, textual. Uh, so that's the address for uh, our learning portal. But also, pss, just to let you know, we also have digital uh, summer camps in August. And there's three themes, Into the Wild, Drawing from Nature, and Design Refined to Fine, which is all around uh, 3D printing and um, creating 3D prints. So that's the last one. And then the other ones are, uh, you'll see on the, our website if you go to our website. So just a heads up on that. Next week, uh, we'll be going back to school uh, and learning about one room schoolhouses with BC archivist uh, Genevieve Weber. And we'll be making um, archival documents uh, with her. So, and I think I might try to be out in our St. Anne's schoolhouse while I do this. So I'm gonna see if I can do that. All right, so that is the end of my sharing of the screen. So I'll go back to what I was saying before. Okay, so in this format, you can see me as a host and our special guests. And today we have Ellen and Deborah. Though we can't see you, we can hear from you if you use the Q&A box or the chat in Zoom or the comment section if you're watching on Facebook Live. Um, heads up, we are gonna be doing some making today. So what you'll need, the most important thing you'll need is paper and drawing or coloring materials like crayons, markers, paints, et cetera, and scissors, glue and glue stick. If you also have construction paper or colored paper for collage, old newspapers, magazines, that's great as well. 
but don't worry about it. We're recording this. You could always come back to this session later. Um, take care of yourself and do things at your own pace. And um, yeah, and so without further ado, let's meet our special guest. So our returning guest from last week uh, is Deborah Vanderlyn. Uh, Deborah is a public services librarian at the Greater Victoria Public Library with a focus on middle childhood and tween literacy. And if you are from Victoria and you find yourself in the Oak Bay branch once, Deborah, it, the, is there any plan, plan for when the, the so, branches will be open again? Right now we have our central branch open for limited services uh, most days. Um, it, so this information is available on the website, gvp.ca, yeah. uh, gvpl.ca, excuse me. Um, I believe Saturday, uh, Juan de Fuca branch um, will be opening up for, again, limited services, where you can, by limited services, you can return your books. You have a small section to browse from for, like, the full scope of our collection, so there's stuff for kids right on up. And there's also what we call our grab-and-go tables, which has, like, if you have had a new baby, you can grab uh, the, the uh, books for baby bag um, if you want to join summer reading club which I'll mention more in a second yeah. um, you can grab your starter pack there so so and then um, central Sandwich will be soon and then it'll be waves after that so over the summer most branches Oak Bay will be there sometime <laughs> August yeah. maybe but we're, the, the dates aren't firm yet so for sure keep an eye on the website understood and there's families from all over BC and maybe further afield too so um, just check in with your local uh, library to see what they're definitely um, so wherever you are, it's, we'll, be look, we'll look forward to when libraries are back fully open. So, um, But yeah, you mentioned the BC Summer Reading Club. Do you want to mention Yes, that? definitely. So we are doing Summer Reading Club. Uh, the Greater Victoria Public Library is doing Summer Reading Club. It's just taken a slightly different form this year. Um, it is all online. So if you go to our website, gbpl.ca forward slash SRC, you will see that there are, it's a self-paced program where we have all sorts of weekly activities that you guys can do. And if you want, and we would really love it, you can share it with us as well. So there's um, that page has links with all the information, including uh, a link where you can share your artwork or whatever happens, we have weekly challenges. So we really would love to have participants come and share their work with us and then a lot of fun. And so, BC yeah. Summer Reading Club happens across the province, right? It does, it happens right across the province. You can also check out the BC SRC website as well, bcsrc.ca, but yeah. Right. Great. Well, we're glad you're here. Do you have a book that you'd like to recommend before uh, around like uh, interesting uh, pictures that are within the book? Sorry to put you on the spot. Oh, that's okay. I love picture books. Well, it's hard to decide because I mean, before we started recording, um, we were talking about one of my most favorite examples when it comes to the magic that happens between um, illustrations and text is uh, Rosie's Walk. Um, and it's just wonderful. Then anything by Eric Carl has just wonderful illustrations. I love the humor of Mo Willems and I could just go on and on. Ellen Rooney, I mean, I was just looking at your illustrations before coming on and again, they're beautiful. Um, oh, John Klassen, they're just fun. Like it's just, there's so many options out there. Well, it's so interconnected because I used yep. to live in Northampton, Massachusetts. Ellen is from Massachusetts and Eric Carl and Mo Williams uh, lived around the corner from me in Northampton. So um, the interconnected world of books and... Yeah, did you ever um, get a chance to go to the Carl Museum when... Uh, no, it just opened right after I left. Yeah, yeah. I've been back and been there and that's a great place yeah. too. So to that voice that you hear, um, we have Ellen Rooney. So Ellen is an illustrator, designer, and artist living in the Southern Okanagan Valley in BC. The first picture book she illustrated was her Fearless Run. Um, but in addition to being an illustrator, Ellen used to work at the Royal BC Museum in, as an exhibit artist. So it's great to have you back, Ellen. Hey, thank you, Chris. Yeah. And um, yeah, so my first question for you is what, is what does that mean to be an illustrator? Yeah, um, well, there's a lot of different kinds of illustration, like, um, you know, you have scientific illustration, botanical illustration, things that you, if you're in the museum you might see in some of the galleries there are a few examples like that um, that they're they're there for a purpose of you know illustrating accurately and often very beautifully also um, you know the structures of plants and animals and things like that the little area that I'm in is picture books and so um, this is you know here's that's um, 
you're typically, it's like a 32 pages um, book that's fully illustrated and aimed for younger, usually for younger kids. Um, so the, there are, you know, there are illustrators who write their own books as well. Uh, my particular area that I've done so far is I illustrate books that are written by other people. So it's really my job to look at that text and then figure out how I can add to it and how I can tell the story through the pictures alongside that text and how, how that will flow through the course of the book. And um, it's, it's really fun and I really love doing it. Um, so, so what is that process like? So you're working with, a, you get asked to work with a, an author um, and you get yeah. sent the, the text. So what's, what's the process like from there? Um, yeah, just to, to give a really quick overview of how it would work is, in this is the most typical cases, there's always exceptions, but uh, typically what happens is the publisher has already um, chosen a text that they want to publish and then they look for an illustrator to provide the artwork and they um, they'll provide they'll contact me if they think that my artwork would be a fit for that text and then they'll send it to me um, and then I have a chance to you know decide if I want to work on it and then assuming I'm, we're going forward with that then um, I start by just reading through that text and figuring out how like what my approach is going to be to it what the feeling is of the book and what kind of a style would uh, work who are the characters um, we'll talk a little bit more about that part later because uh, we're going to do a little brainstorming around some text for this uh, for our activity today do the um, authors ever say to you, ellen like i want to make the have the images be whimsical or like more colorful or do they they really just let you do your, your well the authors um the author, I usually don't have a lot of direct contact with the author in the publisher usually acts as intermediary and they'll, but they, the publisher themselves will have an idea too. Like they'll recognize that the text has certain qualities and, you know, it really should be more whimsical or it should be more, uh, it should be really dynamic or, or it should be really moody and, um, uh, lush or, so there's, they'll usually, they'll usually be interested in my artwork because of something that they see already that I'm doing. And that's why they've chosen me. And then um, they'll say, you know, looks like you, you know, I think this text uh, needs somebody who can understand a bit of science, but also has a sense of humor and, you know, can be kind of whimsical and looks like you can do that. So they'll, uh, that gives me an idea of what they are seeing that they want to do. But usually I don't get asked to do something that's way different from what I've done before because you just go find a different illustrator who's really good at that thing. So, and then you do have a tremendous amount of, there's a lot of collaboration where things are reviewed and feedback is given, um, but uh, you still have a tremendous amount of creative input into what you do with it. Um, and like, just for example, the, um, these are just, you go through a pretty structured process with each book and you would start with some thumbnail sketches that are, for example, these you might not read very well, but those are for a, a book about sound that I've been working on. And um, so, you know, it's, this is like something that works for a lot of big projects that anyone might work on is, you know, you want to start with something small and quicker and get some ideas out and be really free to do a lot of experimenting. And then when I've got something I like, I'll put this all together and the publisher will look at it and they'll send it to the author and they'll have a chance to give feedback on it. And then when we've gone through that stage then we'll move to the next stage, which is doing like a full size black and white drawing or um, image for all of the pages in the, in the book. And then when we, we approve that process, then we move on to the color artwork. And each time it gets reviewed and the author has a little bit of input, but they um, usually it goes through the publisher. So it's very, you know, we, it's, it's great because if you just had to sit down and illustrate an entire book, like from scratch and figure out where to start, you'd be overwhelmed, but the process breaks into steps and that's what 
you know, I recommend if you're overwhelmed. So we have a question. Process down into steps and, and take it one step at a time. So we, we have a question. Uh, do authors ever illustrate their own books? Yes, definitely. Or I don't know whether you say illustrators write their own books or authors illustrate yeah, right. their own books, but or right. I feel like we need a different word for it, but it's like, you know, Thanks. author illustrators, you know, like right. Eric Crowell, Mo Willems, what we were talking about before. These are people who um, have created the, the book from, from scratch. So that's, that process can work a little bit differently, right? Because but the, what we're really gonna, we're gonna talk about a little bit more today in our project is, is when you get a text and how you think about how you wanna illustrate that text. So, so let's I'll jump into that. So we, we've all been hired to do this um, together. <laughs> um, and I haven't seen the text, so. Okay. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we're, we're gonna do, we're just gonna spend a few minutes thinking about what if we just got this new text and how would we approach it? And it's going to be just short, so just as if this was just for one, one two-page spread of a book. Um, and then, then we'll look at some different ways you approach it, uh, or the a little bit about how I make artwork, um, just to demonstrate that. But um, but illustrators work in so many different types of styles that were you know you can work with any kind of materials and be an illustrator, but you're still going to have a sort of process where you have an uh, interaction with the text and you figure out how you want to approach it. So here's our, here's our text. And this is from a book. Um, I'm not sure if Deborah will know what book it's from. Some people out there might know this one. This is a, an older picture book. And so it's a good morning Petunia chattered the chipmunk sitting up, oops, sorry, sitting up straight on a maple stump. Where are you going? Good morning, Mr. Chipmunk. I'm going to that meadow at the edge of the brook to eat the greener, tastier grass. So that's our text. So, so, I, so I would start out looking at my text. I, of course, I have the whole book, but um, for us, like we would just say, you know, Chris and Deborah, like who is, who's in this book? What do we know from reading the text? And maybe what are some of the things we don't know that we could imagine? So well, this we know actually, Petunia. I think, has quite a bit in it already. So, like, who are, who are the characters? And well, we know Petun the, the character named Petunia. Right, but right so far we don't know who Petunia is. Like, what kind is she? Is she a this book rings bells? I don't know it off the top of my head, but my goodness. <laughs> I think she's a cow, isn't she? I don't know. Anyways. No, you, it's not a test. And actually, I want to say for everybody at home doing your own things, don't feel like you have to do what we, we're talking. We're just going to talk about brainstorming, but your Petunia can be anything you want it to be today. But it seems like there's two characters. There's Petunia and then there's the chipmunk. Petunia might be another chipmunk, but also might not be another chipmunk. That's right. Could be. So, so that's something in that for our purposes today, um, we can, maybe that's room for the illustrator. Maybe the illustrator can have some input on who Petunia is, you know, and, and, and maybe we could think about, you know, well, I mean, we know a little bit about her. She likes to eat grass, but, you know, she could be a cow or a different animal, or maybe she's some kind of insect. She's very, she's very tiny. Mm -hmm. So, so we can think about a few different things. You know, maybe what first comes to mind might be something more familiar to us, but maybe we keep thinking about it. We maybe get to, uh, you know, a more interesting solution sometimes. So like, what do you think about where they are? Any, anything that well, tells us where they might be or what kind of setting they might be in? They're in, the, in a forest, some kind of forest. It's on the edge of the forest because there's a meadow over there. Mm hmm Yeah. So we've got, so if we're thinking about what we're going to draw, um, what are some of the things that we might be draw, like drawing today? Um, and if you're at home, it, you can be, you know, maybe just have a blank paper and a pencil and just think of some ideas right now, like, like what do you want to do? You don't have to go and draw the entire thing exactly as it's the final thing is going to be. Right now, you can just think about like 
you know, what are some different ways for me to think about this? And what so can just, I find out a, from reading it? And what can I imagine that will complement it? So Ellen, just like you had said recently, you, you showed a little bit of your sketches, maybe people, uh, families out there can start to sketch what they think this might look like. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, so this is just like a rough sketch of of some of some things. I might um, that idea of the meadow and the brook being further away, so like the edge of the brook to eat the greener, tastier grass. So maybe like the brook is in the further in the background. Like right, a that's bit. a great point, Chris. So you know, that's one way that we would probably tell this story is we might have some characters that are closer up in the foreground. Um, maybe the people who are conversing and then, or the animals. And then, yeah, maybe that other stuff is in the background. Um, so that's definitely one great way to look at it. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that everybody has to do it that way, but, yeah. you know. Um, what do you think, could, Deborah? What's another element of this that you would like visually? Well, it mentions, um, it was not just a stump, but a maple stump. So you need that stump, but I can almost see, you know, you're sort of partially in the trees. So you see some trees around the edges and then the fields, well, the meadows and what have you. Yeah, that's right. You could be like you're saying, if you're on the edge of the forest, maybe you're in amongst these big trees and you can see through and yeah. see those other things in the distance. So, um, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, putting things in the foreground, the background. Um, can you tell anything about anybody's, like, I mean, one of the things I start out looking at a lot is like personalities, like what are, um, what is the character like? So actually, you know, what? I think I'm going to transition to just showing you a little bit of collage work because we can keep thinking about this, but I know we have to kind of keep moving too. Um, we have about 10 minutes, Ellen. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's move on. Um, while you guys work on that and just think about how you can take those ideas. Don't worry too much about the details of that text. Um, and uh, I'll just, while you're thinking about it and coming up with your own ideas and feel just this, this is going to be like, sort of like my early stage. What you're going to do today is kind of like what I would do at the beginning. I would just not put, put too many restrictions on it, but I would just try and think of different ways of looking at it and play. And so also I'm going to now transition to looking down at my work surface here so I can do a little collage with you. So here's my stuff. Um, okay, so so I'm, you know, one thing I would look at is like what are my characters going to look like? And even though I do a lot of drawing and lots of illustration, I don't know everything like, I don't know how to draw everything there is automatically. So I would do things like I'd find references. You can Google online. This is my chipmunk that I did yesterday. Um, you can see he's fairly simplified. So I would look at some pictures um, of chipmunks and make, maybe look at what some of the bigger shapes are. And what I did, um, and what you can I do just mention, Ellen, that I think, because it says the chattering chipmunk and the chipmunk is asking questions. That makes me think the chipmunk is really curious. And, and the way that you have that the face and the little arms going up, it, it feels like this is a curious chipmunk. Right, so, well, that's a great, um, let me do a little, show you a little bit about this, some of the shapes. So what I did first was actually, I started cutting out shapes for my chipmunk. Um, almost a way you might sketch, but sometimes I just do it by cutting things up <laughs> and looking at the different shapes. And I use, like, I'll use things like my, like old phone books or just any kind of paper I have that it's not too precious. And this is just black construction paper and start, start playing with shapes and try and figure out um, how I might put them together. So I've already cut these out, but you know, I had a few different tails to play with. Uh, a couple of different heads. <laughs> they had a couple of different feet. And, so much fun. Um, <laughs> and then and some ear, ears, whoops. And ears can be a great ones for animals for their expressions. Um, and I guess you got some arms in here too. And sometimes you need a little bit of connector in there between the 
So, so you know, one of the reasons I like doing collage is it's fun to just be able to, like you're saying, Chris, like maybe give him a different, feel like, you know, what position is going to make it feel like it fits what's going on, you know? Does he look more curious or does he look more, uh, oh, sorry. His like arm, scared you know, or shy. Yeah, I mean, sometimes mm. you can just move their body parts around and, and see like what is, how does it change their attitude or what they're, you know, what they're doing. And sometimes that's kind of a fun thing about collaging. So, um, so that's, you know, that would be the first step I might take playing around with my character. And like, I also, you know, we were talking about Eric Carl, like a lot of um, my process might start with things like textured paper, like Eric Carl does the same kind of idea where he's got painted paper. And then, um, and I've got just a few different kinds of examples. I love doing the textures for the artwork. And, um, and then, you know, so what, if I'm, I think I took some of this orange for my chipmunk and then I would just take one of my pieces of paper. And there, the reason why, you know, it's nice to just be able to play with whatever paper you have um, is you give, a, gives you a chance to just play around, move your parts around and you can do this with the entire scene too. You can start making a few little trees and making a few, you know, um, other details. And uh, and, and then I think Ellen, you were saying earlier that it's like it it allows you not to be so precious with it, so that it doesn't seem like like if you were gonna draw a chipmunk, you might be like, oh, I don't know if I can draw that exactly how a trip monk looks, but you could be a yeah. little bit less. Precious. And you can make some discoveries too sometimes, you know, and you can look at how simple a chipmunk can be. Or but sometimes I do find that sometimes when I'm um when I'm trying to draw with a pencil, I get too into every detail and I I don't see the big picture as much. Mm. Um so um so if you're working at home, I mean, this is a fun thing to play with and you can really just experiment a lot. Um, and, you know, like we were talking about doing some things in the foreground, some things in the background. So maybe you just want to do some, a, a tree or something or some shrubberies. And um, you'll find that when you have the texture of the painted paper, or it doesn't have to be paint, it could be just using pencil, um, colored pencil, uh, any kind of materials, um, then you can start to add your other elements. And I just encourage you to just play around with them and, and try and figure out if that looks like, you know, maybe it looks like a bigger tree in the distance, or maybe it looks like just a big leaf. Um, and as you move them around, you can kind of just make your own judgment as, well, maybe I need a little bit of a smaller one here. Maybe I, you know, in, and um, it's, you find that, you know, you may not actually need that many elements to build up the scene. Um, and uh, so when you're working on your project at home, just play around with who your characters are. And, um, and if you want to do collage, I encourage you to try it out. It's a lot of fun with this or whatever project. Um, and uh, did you guys want to just look at a little bit of the books that I have? Yeah, and I would just say one more thing, Ellen, if that's if just wondering if this could be part of a process is that on a piece of paper, if you do a sketch, you can then layer on the collage to that sketch. And then before you glue down, you can er erase the pencil. Is that just because I'm wondering if if especially our families that are watching, if they did a sketch of what it could look like, then yeah. they could layer on the, the collage to that sketch. Sure. Yep. You can do it. You can do it that way. Um, yeah. Sometimes I, sometimes if I've got like, especially if I've got like a, an animal that's made up of a bunch of different things, you, you probably at some point you're going to want to try and stick some of them together so that they're easy to work with. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I just take pictures too of like, say if I've arranged my, my things a certain way 
Um, I might just take a quick snap of that with my iPod or something. And then I have something to refer back to when I'm arranging things and trying to glue them down. Um, but um, it's very, it's very open-ended really. So there's a lot that you can just try out um, and um, experiment with, I think. But um, yeah, do you have any other questions? I probably have, I'm sort of speeding through, so I probably haven't answered everything. Yeah, no, that's okay. Cause it's, um, I think it's, it sets people up for like experimenting now. So again, the story, the, the story is the, do you want to read the, the text just one more time? Yeah. And then we'll finish with looking at some of your, your. Yeah, here's our text again. So good morning, Petunia, chattered the chipmunk sitting up straight on a maple stump. Where are you going? Good morning, Mr. Chipmunk. I'm going to that meadow at the edge of the brook to eat the greener, tastier grass. Yep. So and I, when I see that that tree that you created or the leaf, it seems so green and like yummy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do some green, yummy grass too to go in the background. I think I've got like this was a texture I did where I just did brush, brushed a bit of gouache onto. Um, I love using construction paper. It's inexpensive. It's very, um, you know, it's nice. It gives you a color background and then you can add onto it. That's the same as what we did here. And then I've just added a little paint and some uh, color pencil details, okay. like with a, you know, something like that. Um, and so, you know, really it's very open-ended as to what materials you use. I was saying also, like, if you don't have a, paper like that done, then maybe you've got an old magazine and it might have a texture of a tree and you can cut that out and um, and incorporate that in as well. So it just gives your shapes a little bit more texture and um, that just makes them a little bit more, you know, here's just like some painted um, blue on uh, on blue that I might use if I'm going to make my brook and that could just be as simple as just cutting a uh, you know cutting it might be in the distance and we just cut a little strip out and put our brook in the distance you know I, I, I can't move my uh, squirrel around my chipmunk around too much so <laughs> but um once you glue something down, it's, <laughs> it's hard yeah. To... He was glued down, but yeah. Uh, so yeah. So it could. I mean, you know, you could have it be mostly white and just have a few little items there, you know. And maybe you could your stump can be as simple as just like a little rectangle of, um, you know, a little painted rectangle, um, Perfect. or maybe a little you know, little branch with a leaf on it. And so, um, so yeah, I think people, I would really love to see what people end up doing. And also I can send you, if you want, I can send you the, the original illustration that accompanied this text. It was by Roger Duvoisin, who's a Yeah, we'd love to see, I'd love to see that and I could share that next time. And, yeah, I don't want uh, to. Ellen, Ellen, if you continue with this uh, a little bit, then if you share your finished one, then I'll share that next week as well. Okay. Um, and then I, in the chat of, on Zoom, I put my email address and Wes on Facebook, if you can uh, put that as well, because we'd love to see, and I'll share out everyone's uh, illustrations next week. So Ellen, just in the last two minutes, uh, we'd love to, love to see some of your, your books. Okay, sure. Well, I'll show you it since we don't have a lot of time. Um, well, we saw, going back down here to the <laughs> desktop. Um, <laughs> Dusk Explorers just came out in June. And this is Grandmother School. It was from uh, Orca, who are in Victoria. Um, was published in May. And it's a lovely, uh, really wonderful story uh, based on a true story of a school where they started to educate the grandmothers of the village in India. Um, who had never had a chance to have an education. And even though the kids the, were 
learning their grand the grandmothers had been the one generation um, that hadn't gone to school so they had their own um, school and it's a nice story about the grandmother and her granddaughter and this is a story uh, this is really kind of a poem almost about exploring in the outdoors and um, that that tree Ellen looks a little like the tree that you just created oh well hmm my, I'm sure I have my little go-to things that I... No, I it's do. nice. I like it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, actually, you'll see with this, I, I should say that I also do a lot of work digitally when I, I scan. I do a lot of work in my sketchbooks, and then I scan it in, and I can move things around there as well and combine a lot of other different textures. Um, so, yeah. And I... I um, yeah, are we pretty much wrapping up now, Chris, or? Yeah. I have a um, suggestion. Oh, Deborah, Deborah has you. something to say. <laughs> I have a, so you're, you're in good company with your collage art because Henri Matisse, um, the artist, at the end of his life, he got into paper art. So cutting the paper out uh, with his scissors to make wonderful artwork. And I love picture books where I can take in, you know, have some kind of activity that goes with them, especially art based. And um, yeah, so there's this wonderful book called Avi Scissors. And if it's another source of in uh, inspiration, just all that paper art. What's it called? Henri oh, right. Scissors. Oh, Henri Scissors. Oh, great. I gotta check yeah. that out. Um, I believe it's by Jeanette Winter. I actually had to look it up because I couldn't remember the author's name. <laughs> Excellent. So just again, you're in wonderful company. Collage art is wonderfully fun. Yeah, no, that's definitely, I don't know, we could think of others. If, if somebody like, if you like this kind of technique and playing with this technique, you definitely see it in Eric Carl. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and as, you know, maybe when you go and look at picture books, you might, it might be kind of fun to take some that you have at home and see what you think were the materials that people use. Because one of the things I really, really love about doing picture books is that I can use anything I want, you know, that's, uh, Nobody, nobody tells me you, you, this is the right or wrong way to use the materials or, um, and, uh, you know, you can be really playful with it. So I encourage everybody to play at home. Well, that's a great book to, to leave with because of that sentiment, because it seems like the desk explorer, it's all about playfully exploring your neighborhood and during this like magical time of the day yeah. um, and the you capture that so well with your with your art um, thank you we've gotten some comments I, I think probably comments from everyone just saying uh cool art and love your illustrations ellen so thank you folks <laughs> it is gorgeous i love them thank you so much you guys yeah um I don't know. Anything else we could, we, I, we're probably. Yeah, well, I think the next, the, the last thing is just for families out there to, to get to work <laughs> in a fun, <laughs> playful exactly. way. But, yeah. um, to yeah, I guess I haven't your... given you very much structure, but I'm, that's because I'm trying to make you be, um, to Free play. It. Yeah. Be a bit playful with this one. Yeah. I think you're, you, you said it really well, just that you, you have a lot of range when you're doing your work to explore in the ways that feel right for you and then it comes out it comes out beautifully so yeah it's it so, is a, it's a it's a balance between structure and being able to introduce that playfulness but definitely when i'm doing the color artwork is where i have the most chance to do that because um, right. a lot of the other parts of this process we looked at were there's a lot of planning involved in those and you do have to be a bit structured so I always have to try and figure out how to do both those things. Great. Well, um, I wanted to say, Deborah, thank you for the last two weeks joining in. It was great to have you here. Um, Thanks for having me. What's up? Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know. I, I Now I just want to have all of our RBCM at home sessions about books. And <laughs> we had I can't a argue there. Yeah. So. Um, and Ellen, thank you so much. It's great to see you again. And yeah. um, it's really fantastic to hear a little bit about your process and, and for you to have inspired us to, to do some artwork of our own. Well, thanks for having me. All right, so we're gonna stop the uh, Facebook live feed now and stop the recording.